Hello, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. On this episode of Texas Cooking, we're going to be working on some sourdough loaves. Not quite like a French loaf, not quite like a sourdough bread, sort of in between. So I'll tell you what, enjoy this video, and if you think that you can do this bread, then you'll need to get a sourdough starter. Now if you've obtained one of those and you're ready to go, then you need to make sure your starter is up and ready. And that means you need to feed it a couple of times. And this is usually done within the 12 hours prior to uh, using the uh, starter. So to feed it, just simply add it some flour and some water, equal amounts. Usually about a half a cup of each is, is what most people work with. That's what I work with also. And uh, stir that up. And then uh, about six hours later, feed it again. And I would add in some whole wheat flour on that one stir it up and when you do that you're going to see it really get active because that whole wheat flour really feeds it well and you need to use a whole curdle type of whole wheat flour and also you might want to even do a third feeding so you'd be starting pretty much a day ahead of time on your starter once you have your starter ready and it has doubled in bulk and become light and spongy well then you're ready to go um, the other thing when we're working with uh, sourdough bread of course you're not using yeast other than that which is wild caught, meaning your starter. Um, so what we want to do is to get started on the dough separate from that starter. And there's a technique that bakers used to use a long, long time ago. Used to be before there was automated uh, baking, you know, for instance, using large mixers. They used to do what's called autolyzing the dough. And that's simply where you mix together the flour and the water and then allow the dough to sit there for about an hour. And what that does is it allows the gluten to form. And what that means is the gluten is, is becoming wet and it's forming strings uh, within the dough itself. And that makes the dough elastic. And this is going to be helpful in making this dough because you want a dough that has a good gluten development on it when you're making sourdough bread. So I'm going to be using some bread flour and I'm going to start by using two cups of high quality bread flour to one half cup of a good quality whole wheat flour. And to that I will be adding one cup of water. When you do this you might want to consider using water that's not tap. Often tap water is chlorinated. If you use a bottled water or distilled water then it will work a little bit better because it will not have any, anything in it that will bother that yeast. Uh, remember you have a delicate culture of yeast and bacteria in your starter. So. Let's get on to making our bread, and we're going to break in right where there's, uh, right after I've mixed it, and just where we're beginning our autolyzing process. So, let's head on over to that. I have begun making my loaves of sourdough bread by making a simple dough right down here in this bowl. Now, this dough is autolyzing. That means that it is forming its own gluten strands and all you have to do is just mix together your flour and water and then let it sit there and that's autolyzing. I uncovered it to show you this but I've had it covered. Uh, and This was started about 15 minutes ago so I've got about another 45 minutes to go on autolyzing. Now to, uh, so you'll know my ratios here. I started with one cup of water and uh, two cups of the high protein bread flour, any brand you prefer and a half of a cup of whole wheat flour and um, this gives me a nice healthy product that's good quality you do not have to use the bread flour you can go ahead and use all purpose if you'd like I like using it because I like the structure it gives me now this is my starter ugly as it may be and this is something I've been working on for three weeks nursing it and uh, adding in flour and taking some out and adding in more flour and water and taking some out Earlier today, I started this, and it was right at this black mark right here. Uh, the black mark is, um, it, if you notice, it has about doubled in bulk, so it's risen up above that. And it's real light and spongy in the texture of it. Uh, it has kind of a, a jiggling mass, nastiness to it. Now this is a, a culture of uh, wheat and water with uh, bacteria and yeast in it that I've just caught from the open air and uh, everywhere you go you're going to produce a different flavor of uh, sourdough 
in Dallas here, we produce sort of a mild flavored sourdough, so I've left this out three weeks to strengthen it and to really build up the lactobacillus that's in there. That gives me that vinegary-like product. So, when it's time to mix that in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, from this about one and a half, uh, one, two, one and a half cups, and I'll be pouring it straight down into this and we'll add in some more uh, plain flour and that way it will stiffen it up just right because I'm going to be adding a lot of moisture with this and this was a combination of the uh, white flour and wheat just like I've done in uh, the dough loaf over here okay so here we go this is all exciting isn't it this is um, sourdough bread our autolyzing is now finished this has just been sitting here this entire time let me pull this up and look how that hook how it's stretching on the hook. Normally it would just come up as a ball, but it's stretched lovely. That means it's formed its gluten very well. It's nice and stretchy. And uh, this is actually what bread makers used to do a long time ago before there were mixers. They would autolyze the dough every time because there was no time to sit there and hand knead all of that dough. So, we just let Mother Nature do what she does. Now, if you'll notice, the uh, starter that I have here has become rather billowy. It's just popping and bubbling and, and looking basically disgusting. Alright, but that's just the way it looks, you know. can't help it. Anyway, let me move our hook out of the way. It's time to fill up a cup with some of this starter. Now, this is actually our yeast. And look at this, look how strange that is go. They call this a sponge. It's a good name for it. It's got that odd sponge-like texture to it. So I'm just going to measure out about a cup and a half. I don't have to be exact on this. Remember this is one of those recipes where it's not you know everything measured out precisely. With bread it's more of a, an art. Sometimes you hit it dead on, and other times it's just like, oh, well, it went awry. Okay, that's a good full cup. We'll pour that in. I'm not going to worry about getting all of it out of the cup, because I'm going to put more in it. <coughs> Fill that up about halfway or a little more. There. Now I'm going to reach behind me here and get a uh, spatula to help make less of a mess with this. There's one. Okay. I'm going to scrape out my little measuring cup. Now this is going to make the dough way too moist for me to really work with easily. Some people like to work with them very, very moist like that and they produce very good bread with it. Uh, a high hydration point is one of the things that, that really helps bread to develop a lot of character. A lot of those large bubbles that you see inside. Now, let's go ahead and start mixing this again. And as it starts getting mixed together, then I'm going to add flour to just stiffen it up a bit and make it a little more workable for me. Okay, we'll get a better view. Here's that better view. Mixing together nicely. I'm going to clean my uh, measuring cup so I can measure out some flour a little easier. I believe the dough is probably close to ready. Let's look at it. Goodness me. Hydration level is very high. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> Working with this is tricky. 
just got to be diligent and work with it and kind of fight it. It's really sticky. That's the thing about using a sourdough starter. It's got uh, a very interesting gluten development going on in it. Now what I want to do is transfer it from this metal bowl to a glass bowl. And we always want to rise our dough inside of a glass bowl. And the reason this is because it won't react well with metal. It doesn't hurt to mix it in metal, but it's not good to leave it in there for long periods. There now, you notice? Sticking to everything. Don't let that bother you. Just keep pulling and working it out. It will eventually. Look how stretchy that is makes for a good quality bread, but it, it's also very hard to work with like this. Get off of my hand. Get off. There we go. I'm thinking this might have been one of those times I should have oiled my, my bowl that I rise in. When I have some in my hands, it sticks to itself so well. I just keep working it off until I feel I have enough out of it. And I do. Okay. Well, now we're going to let this sticky little mass turn into, um, hopefully, a nice high quality sourdough bread. This is our sourdough that we have been working on. I have just covered it. It's only been in here about five minutes and we're going to watch this about every 30 minutes and just see how it develops over time and uh, kind of get a, a time lapse uh, chronology on how this goes. Now sometimes the rise times are long, sometimes they're short. My French bread rose up quick today so I'm hoping my sourdough will do the same. Well now we take a look at our dough. It has risen up nicely. It has been about 40 minutes and uh, frankly this sourdough is rising much faster than most of them I've ever done before however uh, it's uh, kind of nice to see I built a good strong batch of starter and fed it uh, about three times within the last I would say maybe 20 hours and that was one of the reasons it really got a heavy punch like this I believe so it's looking good We'll just give it some more time. Well, there's our sourdough. It looks like it has way more than doubled in bulk, but guess what? We're going to let it rise up some more. I've learned that allowing dough to rise a long period of time really helps to build better structure in the dough. You get a uh, more loose crumb, bigger, basically bigger pockets of air inside the dough. The same way that it's, if you'll notice down here, these pockets of air and up in here, uh, you'll see little pockets. It's the same thing we're trying to do inside of our loaf of bread. So we have to build small ones so that they grow larger and larger. And the more of them that we build, the better off. So this is going to be risen more than once. We're going to have to punch it down, roll it into loaves, and then turn it into bread. Well, now if you notice our uh, bread, our dough has now tripled in bulk. It did so really quickly. Uh, it was only just a few hours. Now first thing I want to do is get down on my board here plenty of flour. Because last time we handled this it was extremely sticky and pretty much sticking to everything. I have to usually keep a small cup, measuring cup of flour sitting out. You can also have plenty on my hands. It's quite by design. Try to get this to roll out onto our uh, floured board here. Sure enough, it's still every bit as sticky as it was before. So I just threw a little flour up in there. That does not hurt it. It can make it a little easier getting it out.
Don't have to do a whole lot, just a little bit. Just redistributing everything that's in that dough. So we'll rise evenly. Now, we'll take this and firm it into kind of a, work it into a round ball. Putting a flour down. I'm gonna leave this right here just for a moment. And then I'm gonna cut this in half and form two separate loaves with it. Let's take my chef's knife, make a good cut here. And look at all the, the little pores and holes that are in this. It's just perfect for a good quality bread. Right now, what I'm going to do, I just want to form these into a couple of little cylinders, and I'm going to work them as little as possible. No extra kneading or any of that. The way I would do with a, uh, a French loaf, I would knead that out quite a bit. And this I'm starting with a, a much thicker piece of dough than I normally would for French dough also. It's going to be for like a French baguette. I normally make those a little bit thinner than this. Now I want to take my uh, pan that I'm going to be rising these on and dust it with some semolina flour. We'll start with our baking sheet. Let's get a bag of, uh, a bag of Durham wheat semolina here. And this is great, it'll just keep these from sticking. I need to do a couple of trails, one for each baguette. One. that little dough right there. I'm going to roll out the other one and put it right next to it and then we're going to start its next rise. All right. Very sizable loaves. Good. Now I've got the next one there. Okay, now let's just let those beautiful baguettes rise up into the dough they can be and then we're going to put them in the oven. Now during this rising we're also going to be misting these occasionally with some water. And I will at times cover them with some parchment just to keep any air from blowing on them while they are rising up. Okay well now we're waiting again. Our sourdough loaves have come a long way and uh, they've been drying now for, excuse me, rising now for about uh, an hour, but they're starting to dry on this outer surface and when that happens it makes it difficult for the bread inside to expand. So what I'm going to try to do is to make it a little easier by softening up that outer surface and we're going to mist it just a little bit with some water. And if you watch closely, you can actually see these things puff up a little bit as I do this. Get around here. Also, 
with them absorbing extra water on their outer layer, that's going to allow them to become even crisper on the outside. So this is definitely a beneficial little step. And I do this two or three different times when I'm rising up loaves like this. And uh, it just gives me a great crust on them. It's been about another 30 minutes and it's the last time I'm going to give these a spray. And if you'll notice they split open from the last time that I sprayed them. This is a real good sign. It says that it's, this is doing exactly what we want it to, which is allowing these to open up and expand a little easier. And at the same time it's going to help us to develop that hard crust. Okay, now this is the point where I'll go ahead and get my oven started. Up till now it hasn't uh, even been on. And as these finish expanding just a little bit more and getting a little lighter and fluffier on the inside, we're going to have the heat of the oven heating them also in addition to the uh, burner that's underneath them. So that helps them out as well. Wow, let me tell you, these loaves have gotten really big. They're almost touching here. So, my oven is hot and I'm about ready to go ahead and put these in. What I'm going to do now is to make some slash marks, do it like so. Now generally you might want to use a razor blade for this unless your knives are just uh, like wickedly sharp. These do a couple of things. A, they do decorate the loaf as it bakes. They also allow for expansion. And you'll see what I mean, because they'll open up and the, the dough will puff up from there. And there's our timer letting me know that the oven and pan are all hot enough. Okay, now, that deflated them just slightly, but they're gonna puff up here in just a moment as, as soon as they hit that oven. So, the next thing is, we're going to hit a bunch of water into that lower skillet that I have in this oven that's been heating. The oven's at 450 and uh, I need to spray these one time before putting them in there. Okay, this is somewhat of a tricky dance. So let me show you what we do. First, we give our loaves a good spray. There they are. They're nice and moist. When I open the oven door, I'm going to put these in it quickly as well as hit it with water quickly. Okay, first, spread in, water down in my pan. There we are. Now, that's going to steam that oven and that's going to help make the crust a lot harder. And the idea here is the longer we can keep the bread in the oven, the harder that crust gets. So if I keep adding steam and keep mi misting the uh, bread with water, that slows down that bake time and allows that hard, thick, crispy crust to develop. Okay? That's the trick. Now, we wait for about two minutes and then we're going to hit it with another spray. My beeper has just gone off my timer, rather, and uh, so I need to open this up give it another spray and if my pan on the bottom is dried out I'll throw some more water in it otherwise I'll let it keep boiling now starting to puff up again we still have some water in the lower pan we're gonna let it keep on baking and remember this is at 450 degrees boy that sure smells good it has been another two minutes so it's time for us to do this again. Now, quickly. We're in the bottom pan again. Cover. Keeping it moist. Slowing down that bake. 
Now, I'm going to do this over and over again, every two minutes, and uh, as soon as it starts developing some decent crust and browning, that's when I'm going to back off of it because that's when it's time to just let that crust harden up. Two more minutes in timing. Once again, we're at that two minute mark. Here we go. Back in the oven. The lower pan is still steaming. Another two minutes we go time. again. Same thing. A lot of humidity in this oven. I just got hit in the face with a big blast of steam when I opened it. That's a good sign. Now, another two minutes. Actually, I'm going to start increasing this now to three minute, uh, excuse me, three minute intervals. Okay, we've just had a three minute bake. Let's pull these out and mist them again. I'm starting to get a little brownie. Slight bit on the edges. Hit it with a little water. A little of that water on the bread. Hopefully it won't hurt it, but we'll see. After all, we've been misting it with water, right? <laughs> it should be fine. Well, we've been another three minutes. Let's take a look at this. And then if I need to do another spritz, it'll probably be in a longer time period. But I'm not sure uh, how many more I'm going to need to do of these. It's looking really good. The lower pan still needs a little more water. There we go. Now. I'm going to give that, this time, about four minute time. Now, see you back in four minutes, and then after that, I think that's going to be the last time we spray. I now have uh, just given it another four minutes, and we should see some excellent crust development at this point. I'm going to give it one more spray. That'll be it. Yes, look at that. Beautiful color. Okay. I'm just going to leave it in there and let it finish baking now. And I want it to turn into a little bit darker brown. I'm looking at probably another five to eight minutes on this loaf, I bet. Uh, but I'll just be keeping a close eye on it. And when it looks just right, that's when I'll pull it out. So when it comes to timing a loaf, one day the loaves may take 30 minutes and another day the loaves may take 20 minutes. You just never know. Okay, and that's, the, again, the part of the art of bread making. It is an art, and uh, when you figure it out, you're ahead of everyone else in the world. They are out of the oven now. They are still steaming hot. I just now removed them. Uh, these, some of these slits opened up well. Others just sort of closed back. It has the right sound. It's a hollow sound. And that's exactly what we're looking for, okay? I've also got a beautiful glossy crust on this. It's very shiny and slick. And uh, I'm sure it's going to come out rather hard. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. So we're going to cut into this in just a little bit as soon as it's cool enough for me to touch. And we'll take a look at it and try it out. The bread has just now cooled down enough that I can touch it. And it's got a good tough exterior on it. It's starting to take on more of a hard leather effect. And I decided, okay cut into this. And I'll guarantee you that crust is very hard. It's starting to shatter a little bit on the outer there as I'm cutting through it. However, what I've got is a really nice bread. It's got an even crumb with some smart, uh, some larger pockets. I wish it had more of that, but I'm going to be working on that. Who knows? This is a new recipe. Mmm, tasty. So, I'm going to make some garlic toast out of this. We're going to see how good it can be. I was just finishing up with some um, 
bread that I was making, I was making some sourdough bread, and I thought, oh my gosh, what would be better than to make some garlic toast out of that wonderful taste sourdough bread. So, that's exactly what I decided to do. Now, what I have here is just some butter. You can use salted, unsalted, either way is fine. I have some Parmesan cheese here. Now, you don't want to use the expensive stuff that you have to grate yourself. You want to use the cheap, dry stuff that comes in a little container. And there's a reason for this. This stuff, when it becomes saturated with butter, and it's painted over the top of toast that's going to be under a broiler, then it has a tendency to puff up and become uh, sort of like a, a little miniature Rice crispy, but it's made of Parmesan cheese, so I guess it's Parmesan cheese crispy. And uh, anyway, it puffs up. It pops kind of like popcorn does. You can watch it under the broiler. It's quite interesting. But it makes a really neat tasting um, garlic bread, okay? So... I like to put that in there. Now, if you want to put some more cheese over the top of it and melt it over the top, hey, that's cool, too. Uh, go right ahead. And, of course, herbs always belong in this kind of stuff. So if you want to put parsley in there, especially some fresh parsley, or if you got thyme or basil or anything like that, hey, that's wonderful. Toss it down in there and enjoy that on that bread because it's going to make it wonderful tasting. Now, you notice what I'm doing. I'm just going to fix this garlic real quick. Shed it of its outer cover. Go skirt that off and get rid of it. There we are. Okay. Now, Now I've got my garlic ready. Sometimes you can knock things off the blade like that. Sometimes the garlic sticks to too well. Now, I'll put my garlic right down to that butter. There's a bit of it in there I can get in there. Okay. I'll sprinkle in a little of this Parmesan over it. Now all you have to do is take a fork, mash all of that together, paint it over your slices of bread, and you've got the best tasting garlic toast. I'll tell you what, wait till you give it a try. It's simple. Sometimes the simplest things are the best. Well, there we go. Now they're all buttered up, and what I've done here is I added in a little extra fresh thyme also. Oh goodness, we're going to see how that tastes. Actually, I already know. I've done it before. Hope you enjoy Well, there we have it. That's beautiful garlic bread. Now, there's just one last thing that I need with this. Something to really make it a little bit better. Something homemade, and it should be made of something similar, grains. So, here's to garlic toast and good weekend times. Let's try that. Mmm. There goes another alarm. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure going to. <laughs> well, there we have it. 
sourdough bread. That stuff tastes so good. It is just delicious. I tell you what, I hope you don't uh, give up on this. Give it a try. It takes a while to make sourdough, but once you're up and running on it, it's really easy. Okay? First couple of times might be a little bit shaky for you, but I'm sure you'll do just fine. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today, and please subscribe. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today, the show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today, where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.